So today I'm going to show you a few tests you can do at home to, to try to determine if a ceramic object might or definitely isn't ancient. Now, this isn't a guaranteed test. A better test would be like a thermal luminescence test, or even if there's deposits in the object, you could do carbon-14 dating on the deposits. But these are just things you can do to kind of point you in the right direction. So on the table we have three objects that are genuine ancient artifacts and three objects that are complete fakes. So the first test, not so much of a test, is more of just an inspection. You look at the object and you determine if it looks old or not. Now if on the object there was, and I don't have one here right now, but if on the object there were a kind of hazy, even white coating, perfectly even and uniform throughout, that coating was artificially applied. Now, none of these have that, because I don't buy pieces that I know are garbage. But just because a piece is worn, like this, doesn't mean that it's necessarily ancient. It's very easy to wear down pottery. And just because a piece looks excellent, doesn't mean that it's necessarily modern. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is actually a Byzantine oil lamp from Abu Ghosh. It was found underneath a monastery and later a crusader church. So this lamp is actually going to be an outlier because this lamp is glazed. That's why you can see some of this darker coloring here. Now glaze throws off all of these tests. As there's three tests you can do at home, the visual test, the smell test, and the sound test. Now, on genuine ancient pottery, it's usually fired at a lower temperature. So, if you flick it gently with your fingernail, it should sound very low-toned. Can you hear that dull thud? That one's actually too fragile to flick. <laughs> now on newer pottery, you hear that high pitch sound? That ring to it? This one's actually a little bit of an outlier, but that's because of the shape. You can still hear that it's a higher pitch than something like this Canaanite pot. But with glazed pottery, the glaze automatically assumes that deeper pitch, so it really throws off the test. Now, there is another test you can do that won't work on glazed pottery, because as you will see, you put water on the surface, and it's just sitting there. You put water on the surface of a modern pot, this is actually probably early 20th century. This was probably brought back by a soldier in World War I as a souvenir from Egypt. This is called an Ola. But you see that the water is just sitting there. It's not doing anything. Ola is for purifying water. So if you look inside, you can see holes that act like a filter and a screen to prevent your purification material from falling into where the water is. But if we take, actually, let's try this one. This one's fake too. Looks all but the fake. Yeah, it's just sitting there. You don't see any absorption whatsoever. I'm rubbing the water in, and as you can see, it's absorbing very quickly. Now that is a good sign, because very old terracottas, ceramics in general, will absorb water very quickly compared to newer. So the fact that that water has already disappeared is a good indication that this pot could indeed be genuine. And I know this one's genuine. It came with a authentic, not a fake, certificate of authenticity from a very well-respected professional in Israel. Now this one might not, might looked, bleh, might look glazed, but it's not. This one's actually burnished. Now burnished pottery 
doesn't absorb water very quickly either. So this test is actually not good on this piece, which is just a souvenir trinket that somebody brought back from a tour to Egypt. So you can see it's just sitting there too. So burnished pottery and glazed pottery don't absorb water. Burnished is rubbing it with a piece of leather before firing it to try to smooth out the imperfections. Unglazed ceramics that are ancient will absorb the water quickly. Unglazed ceramics that aren't ancient will not absorb the water quickly. And in fact, even though it's been sitting here all this time, you can still see that the water is still sitting there. And this is a very hot day. The temperature is like 95 out here today. So even with that, it's still not absorbing quickly. But as you saw with the Canaanite pot, it absorbed immediately. Now, I've ever not actually ever tried it on this pot. This one's very fragile. So I hate to do it to it, but... I do know for a fact that this one's genuine, too. See, this is a different type of ceramic. This one's from South America, so things are a little bit different between South American ceramics and Middle Eastern ceramics. But we can see that it's starting to absorb it rather quickly. Even though this was a burnished piece, the burnishing has kind of worn off. Now, I don't know if we're going to be able to see it. It's very bright out here. But inside this pot, you can actually see roots. Now, if you go to the Ancient Pottery group on Facebook, the group I run, I actually have very clear pictures of those roots. And inside this pot, you will see that the roots are actually inside the fabric of the clay itself, because this pot was buried about a thousand years ago. This is a Waztec ceremonial pot of some type. Very strange looking piece. But roots are a good sign because roots don't form in the firing process. Roots form when a pot is deposited. And even if the roots do fall away... No, no roots are falling out today. Even if the roots do fall away, you'll sometimes see little marks on the surface. Can you see them? It's actually a little bit of root, roots there, and then the marks around it from where the root crumbled. Now that's a good sign that it is indeed authentic buried piece. In desert pieces, the surface tends to just crumble away to nothing, such as in the case of this Canaanite pot. You can see it's badly worn from desert sands blowing around it for centuries. So there's not going to be root marks in pottery found in the Middle East. It's usually more of a South American, you know, India, stuff like that. And then the final test you can do is actually when the piece is wet, it will have a sort of earthy, musty smell. Yes, it's finally dried, but when it's dry, if it has that earthy, musty smell, there's a good chance that it's not genuine. As you can replicate that earthy, musty dirt smell very easily, but if it smells that way when it's dry and wet, it's been artificially applied. When it smells that way only when wet, then it's most likely from being buried for centuries. Now, in the case of pottery that actually still has roots on it, there will be a slight smell, just for the fact that there's usually dirt still in the crevices. Very hard to get this thing to focus. You can actually see some of the dirt there. Now, if the dirt doesn't come off when you brush it, that would mean it's glued on, so I'm pretty sure you know what that means automatically. If it's glued on, it's probably a fake if it just crumbles away at the slightest touch from the crevices, it's probably genuine. A lot of people who fake pottery like to apply it to the surfaces that are likely to get worn off first. 
but an archaeologist will usually take care of that. And most collectors, by the time it gets to them, it will usually have fallen off. So if it's still on the bare surfaces that you're going to touch, then it's probably fake. 